Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. Uh, we are just delighted to be in church today and most of to share the word of God today. I'm Ella Glasgow and on my left is uh, the Cardman. Okay, at this time before we go into our lesson this morning, let's bow our heads as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you, dear God, for allowing us to enter your sanctuary on this holy Sabbath day. We ask that you be in our present day, God, and bless those that is hearing your word that we come to del deliver unto them. For you, God, are the counsel, and you are our rock. So let the, ble the lessons of the panel be a blessing unto those is that they fall upon. Let these lessons be um, heard like the um, man that built his house on the rock, that Jesus is our rock. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Okay, today we are dealing with, this morning we are dealing with the topic, dealing with death. With death. Dealing with death. And most of us here today, have, I'm sure, have some experience, uh, experiences dealing with debt, uh, debtors, okay? Or maybe text says, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. One, you know, um, the New, New King James Version put it nice. It says, um, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. But one translation says that the borrower is slave to the lender, and that word that make it that enforce the point more forcefully. You know, when you're a servant, okay, it's it's good, but it's not so bad. But when you're a slave, yeah, it, it tells you the, the, the real who you really are. And you know, being a slave to someone means that you are indebted to them, you are obligated to them, and so God don't want His people to be slave to anyone at all, especially when it comes to the matter of money, borrowing and lending. Yes, uh, my meaning of that on the memory text, which says the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is a servant to the lender. To me, that understanding is, I get is that the power is in those who are rich. The rich they are the ones who are abundant, and they rule over those who have not, or those who are in poverty. So they take advantage of those that are less fortunate than them, and those that are less fortunate than those that do have, they are like servants because they are in need. Amen. Okay. Amen. One definition of debt is, Living today on what you expect to earn in the future. Today, there seems to be a way of life, but should not be the norm for Christians. Wow. Mm. The Bible discourages debt in the scripture. There are at least 26 references to debt, and all negative. The Bible does not say that it is a sin to borrow money, but it does talk about the, the often bad consequences of doing so. When considering financial obligation, Paul counsel, render therefore to all, all their due, tax to whom tax is due, custom to whom custom due, fair to whom fair, honor to whom honor, owe no, man, no one anything, expect to love one another. Amen. Why is there an almost international storage at every level, personal, corporate, and government. Every society has always been at least a small percentage who were in debt. Today, mm -mm. today, a much larger portion of the people are in debt, and it's almost never to their benefit. This week, we will consider the reason for debt and how to deal with it. You may be in debt. You may be debt free, but you can share this value information with families, friends, and friends who could benefit from it. So it is telling us that, you know, in our previous years, 
there were a small amount of people that really accumulate debt. So it means, therefore, that folks were more content with their way of life. But today, it seems as a surgeon where you have a lot of folks in debt, and especially when it comes to credit card debt and debt, debt as we will go into our lesson, you realize that there are some debt that you can avoid. And so God wants his people to live in the financial freedom and live a life without debt. And then we'll understand that how we can achieve this life, living this life, without have to be indebted to people all the time. Yeah, Brother um, Elder Glasgow, I want to say that back in the biblical time compared to now, there's no difference than what is happening now. Right. Debt is debt. You owe, you owe. And the consequences was also the same. If you didn't, you couldn't pay, they would take something from you. But back there, um, in the biblical time, you will become a servant or a slave. Now you, they just take away what you owe. It's, they have laws against people being slaves in certain countries. But I looked up certain things, and they still got slavery going on in certain, sla in certain um, countries, but you don't hear much of it, only if you go over there. It's just like when you watch... Um, uh, international news, you see they got um, a lot of stuff going on where they control people. And, you know, they control women, they control children, and if you is less fortunate in those countries, you become, they will say a servant, but I would say a slave. Yeah. Amen. Okay, as we go to Sunday lesson, it talk about the debt problem, the debt problem. And, uh, uh, our text is Deuteronomy 28. It says, Now it shall be, if you, diligently, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all this commandment which I command you to do, the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations. So it is telling us right from the beginning there, the dead problem is that we have to seek God. We have to, give, we have to give heed to the word of God. And we have to obey God's commandment. And if we obey God's commandment like the, the message Moses was telling children of Israel, then if you obey all of God's Ten Commandments, if you pay heed to his word, then you won't have to borrow from anyone. Instead of borrowing from anyone, they will be borrowing from you because you would have no need of nothing. And so Sunday, the author says that studies have showed that there are three primary reasons that people get into financial difficulty. They are listed here in order. First one, ignorance. When you say ignorance, what do you really mean? You say many people, even educated, fi uh, financial, educated, uh, are financially illiterate. illiterate. Yes. They were simply never exposed to the biblical, biblical or even secular principle of money management. There is a hope, however, in this lesson will prove a simple outline of these principles and how to apply them. So it is telling us that even educated people in their field, still illiterate when it comes to money management, uh, the aspect of money, uh, how to deal with money. Because they go into debt and not knowing uh, the outcome of their debt because sometimes they are... They just are, they are in need. And you know, that's one thing when you are in need and you can find, figure out the way out, then you might say, you know what, the first thing that out of this financial debt is to, is to borrow because you can't beg your way out of it because you figure out who really have. Because most of the folks that you might think of, they too don't have and they too are in need. And so many times we find ourselves, okay, you know what, to get out of this debt, I really have to borrow. And sometimes you borrow from your friends, and sometimes you might go to financial institution where you, you borrow. And there we find that we become slave to the, the, to the lender. You say, second reason for financial difficulty is greed and selfishness. You know, from the beginning of time, we know that Satan, you know, he is covetous. And he wanted the position of God. And, right. And so. The Bible says that because of this, the Bible says that sin entered into him. 
and so we was born in sin, and so we inherit this, sin, this sinful nature. And one of the sinful nature is selfishness. And covetousness is that we always want things for ourselves. And we want, always want what is best for us. Well, nothing wrong if it's, you want what is best for you. But at the same time, you have to be so careful that how you go about and getting what is best for you. Because sometimes it goes on the expense of others and it causes you to be a slave to someone by your selfish motive. And if, if you, you take a look at yourself sometime, you know, and you look back at, at the things but that you probably have, you'd realize that when you don't have money, there are a lot of things that you realize that you can live without. And when you have money, it's like you spend a little here, a little there, and then, okay, it feels good, but then you don't have enough, and then you realize that you really have enough. And when you have money, you seem not to have enough because you always want something. And so it tells us that you have to have a content in mind. And you have to have the Holy Spirit controlling your thoughts. And that's one way in which you can help um, in other financial debt. The third the, reason. I was about to say, one of the lessons that I know and I learned about um, financial um, um, stuff like debt and problems was the story about Joseph. And Joseph became a pharaoh. I mean, what, what, the second in command with the, the pharaoh. Governor. Yeah, the governor. He, he knew that it was necessary for them to save up because it was going to be a time when they didn't have. And that's a, um, a lot of, uh, I say a lot of people don't practice that. They don't, they practice, a lot of people is controlled so much about materialistic things, they just see and spend. That's how they get in debt. They get compulsive with seeing because you know, we live in a government, in a world that is putting things out there for the eyes. And when the eyes see, the eyes desire, you know. And then, you know, you figure that you can buy this. Every time Christmas comes, people buy, spend a lot of money, unnecessary money, you know. And Valentine's Day, every, every but every day is a Thanksgiving, you know. And you have to really see that money has power. So you got to... Hold on to your money. You got to learn how to save your money instead of how to spend your money. Amen. And the Bible tells us, um, it says to go to the ants, it's not God, uh, Solomon says, it's a consider the ways of the ants and be wise in that the ants, what the ants do? In summer, they save up. Yeah. And when like, it's winter, they don't have to go out. Just like the squirrels. Right. Any animal, the animals have a lot of sense because they know seasons. <laughs> right. You know, but men don't live by season. Right. You know. And so we realize that for us, there's always a season like when you have a lot. And it's like you go back to the story of Joseph. Joseph realized that if famine was coming and he told Pharaoh, he said, listen, you need to save up for when this famine is over. Yeah, that was financial and, wisdom. Right. And God so, gave him that. Right. And so the same counsel is going on to us today. Amen. It says that some folks um, go into final, um, financial debt because of personal misfortune. You know, sometimes there are things happen to you that you really don't have no control over. Yeah. You know, you're at home, the hurricane come, it blows on your house, somehow you thought you had insurance. insurance. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they knew they had no insurance. <laughs> they know they didn't have no insurance. Uh, uh, and then you realize that you got the insurance company, you pay up to a certain time, and you realize that the money, no money. Uh, you've been paying the insurance, but you didn't... You don't know, ensure the content in the house. And the house caught on fire, and every, everything inside the house burned. And so you figure, well, okay, yeah, well, I've been paying my insurance, but you did not really read the policy. And right. here you are, everything is gone. And you have to start from square one. And there you are, you know, misfortune. There are things that happen to us that we don't have no control over. And there are situations like this. But you know what? God wants his people to be wise. And even though, you know, mis things might happen to us, he expects us to, you know, live a life in such a way that we don't have to be dependent upon, you know, people. He wants us to be totally dependent on him. And even the things that we are not 
we can control we can control the weather. We can't control a storm. But somehow he gave us the wisdom. For the right. Storm. He gave us the wisdom in which we can actually prepare for this storm. And so we have to, you know, save up. Don't spend all. Save up for rainy day. Because one thing you must assure, the rainy day will come. And when it comes, then it won't have to catch you unaware. But you would be the wise, you would be a wise person, just saving up in advance. And then, you know, for you the rainfall, I the sun hat, it will make a difference for you. Amen. Okay, let's go on to Monday. Okay. Um, yeah, happy Sabbath again. Um, Monday lessons deal with following God's godly counsel. We all, it says this, that we are material beings. We know that. And we live in a material world, a world that at times can be very tempting. You will have to be made out of steel and synthetic oil, not flesh and blood, not to feel at times the temptation of material possessions and the desire of wealth. Yes, that's because it's a standard thing that we, we see what's going on, and we are kind of like prone to the, world, to the way of the world. When you're not in the word of God, then you're in the way of the world. You have knowledge of the world instead of knowledge of how spiritual things are. Because it, it, any, it says in the Bible that anything you store up here is not yours. It's going to fade away. If you build a house, if you build a mansion, if you buy some land, you're going to leave that behind for somebody else. So, you know, God tells you, you know, that, you know, seek the kingdom of God first. first. Yes. Put God first. first. Right. Because we all know that from the beginning, everyone's going to die. You know, and whatever you do here on this earth, you're going to take account. True. So God asks you to seek him first. Yes. Seek his counsel first. Right. He knows that you, um, you're you going to be here temporarily, and you, 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 you have to eat. You have to um, find shelter. You have to clothe yourself. You have to um, have the basics. And he, and he will provide you with the basics. Anything... Um, Beyond that, then you know you're not really being um, you're being of the world. God didn't say that you can look nice, you can have a car, you can have a house. Yo, those things are sufficient. But going beyond that now could put you into financial problems. Okay, you're right. And, and like it's a big say, following godly counsel, it's telling us that as Christians, we should seek counsel. From folks who we think have more knowledge about financial situation than us, and you know, when you see counsel, adhere to the counsel. You know, because I've 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 heard of experience where folk, you know, they wanted to buy a car, and you know, they wanted to buy a piece of land, and you know, they went and asked seek for advice, and the person said, "Well, you know what? You know, the car would depreciate, but the land would appreciate, but." You know, the land, they need, they need something now. And, you know, they decide, you know what? They bought the vehicle. But a few days after what happened, they get an accident and the vehicle total right off, you know? And it's behoved us, and that's why God wants his people to be wise. If you seek God, godly counsel, why go to Brother Ronnie about financial issues and talk to him about finance? And after he sit down, and tell me all that needs to be done in order for my life to be pro productive or uh, even to get me out of debt. Then I go back now and do the things that I actually plan already. You see, sometimes, even when we see counsel, we already determine in our minds what we want to do. And so we're hoping that these counsel that we receive would kind of help us to, um, to encourage us on the path which we already plan. But somehow, sometimes, the council, it deviates from the plan that we have. And so we say, no, that, that, that council can't be right. But yeah, sometimes God's, God knows it all and God sees beyond. And so when he gave us wise council, we should add heed to it. Yeah, and in Deuteronomy um, chapter 15, verse 6, it tells us that if you are faithful in obeying God's commandment, yes. you will be blessed 
Amen. and be able to lend and not Amen. borrow. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the world, the love of the world can be so strong that people will get into debt in order as they hope to satisfy that love. True. It never works. Yes. And because debt, they don't know that debt is one of Satan's net yep. that he sets for souls. It mm -hmm. just makes sense that God would like to see his children debt free. Because he know God knows that the worries and your faith will drop if you um have some issues with money. But money do control the world. Right. We all know that the world revolve against big financial cooperation. And we see that a lot of big cooperation cooperation, they um get um crashes, the um airlines, the stock markets, yes. and that and that do affect um the poor people and right. the rich too. You know, but mostly the, the poor people where the um, things get in pandemic prices get high and, you know, where eggs was $3, eggs is $10. Yes. You know, and then your mm. your wages don't go up. Right. You, you know, you might work more or work less. You know, so you have to seek the um, counsel of God. In the Bible, it tells you a lot about financial help. If you look into Proverbs and you go through seeking about financial uh, wisdom, it tell you a lot. It tell you don't borrow. No. And it tell you sometimes don't lend. Yeah. But sometimes you do have to borrow. And it might be sometimes you do have to lend. But, you know, God don't want you to do that. God wants you to um, be sufficient. And one of the... Um, Main way I learned to um, follow God's counsel is by paying tithes, you know, because that helps you to manage. It sets you in a mind-managing state because, you see, the first thing is this. You put God first, yes. okay? Now, you know you have to take out for God. You know you got to take out for the rent and everything. So the little bit that you do have, you should know how to manage because it ain't much. It ain't gonna be much. True. You know. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So and as as uh, uh, Talman says that you know when when we before we got baptized we repeat um a lot of vows. Yeah. And you know it's like the children of Israel they say all that the Lord said to do we will do. And it's the same thing for us today is that when we receive when we before we got baptized we got the um receiving the the, the, the vows we say you know what. It asks you to indicate by lifting up your right hand. And so you vow that all that you say to do, you will do. Right. But here you are now. You are in church and the tithes and offering come up, aspect of up. And we have to realize that returning tithes and offering is part of our praise and thanksgiving to God. Mm -hmm. Because we own nothing. And we are just giving back to him what is rightfully his. And when you, you David say, it's better not to vow. And to vow and to break your vow. And so when we decide that, you know what, because of my financial obligation, you know, this week I can't return my faithful tithes and offering. Then we are just like digging a hole to pull a hole. And it's making it more difficult because now you are on your own and just trying to do everything on your own. And I'm telling you, without Jesus, you can't make it. And so Jesus just wants us to just trust him. And he asks us to prove him. In other words, put him to the test. And just see him come to for us. You know, if you don't do an exam, then you won't know your, 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 your state. You don't know where you are. And so, you know, it's an exam for us. And if we don't put God to the test. And it, it, the, the Bible tells us that. It's like gold tried in fire. You have to go through. And so when you go through the, this test and you pass this test, you know what? It gives you additional help when you face an next exam. Because you know the same God that helped you over here, then he will see you through the next one. Amen. Okay, now we will move on to Tuesday lesson, which deal with how to get out of debt. A lot of people know how to get into debt. Yes. <laughs> you know, they don't know how to get out. When they get into debt, they, build, they dig a deeper grave instead of 
um, trying to call out of that. So in Proverbs um, 22, um, verse 7, it repeats, it says that, um, it says, um, the rich rules over the poor, yes. and the borrower is a servant to the lender. This warns us about borrowing and what it can bring about in our life. And um, in Matthew um, chapter 18, 25, it speaks about one example of what happened to a man who borrowed and couldn't pay back. Matthew 18, um, 25, okay? It says, but so much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and his children and all that he had and payments to be made. Yeah, that's what, in those days, that's what used to go on. And maybe, probably in certain countries, that still goes on. Because when you owe, people want you to pay. Yes. You know? So um, it also says, he, it has a, a saying this, he that borrows put himself in sorrows. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Be the head. God tell us be the head, not the tail. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it says, what can be done to escape this unfortunate phenomenon? If you are in debt, the following outline will help you to begin a debt elimination process. The plan is simple. It had its premise and three steps. The premise is a commitment to God to be faithful in returning his holy ties to access his wisdom and bless him. He is eager to bless those who obey him. You see, returning tithes is a commandment. Yes. So, you work, and you're not working for yourself. But people, some people um, get a misunderstanding of returning tithes. Returning tithes, right, it goes toward the furtherment of helping the church to spread the gospel of God. Amen, amen. It goes towards to helping the unfortunate ones that in the community, those that are in the church, it pays the bill for the church, it pays the pastor's bill, it helps us to um, donate to people, help the poor. So uh, the money in itself is not going to God. God don't need your money. True. God said that he wants you to be obedient to Amen. his commandment. Because being obedient, obedient to his commandment is beneficial for everyone. Amen. Amen. You understand? So once we don't return tithes, we we we're not showing um, um, um commitment oh. and oh, we're showing then. disobedience. Right. We want God to help us, right? But we're not helping those that God need help. Right. Yeah, God don't need our help. You know, God is all God. He, he can do without us. But he wants us to help others. Just like he can bless you, you take that blessing and you bless others. Yes, and returning ties have to do with your relationship with God. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, step one is to declare a moratorium on additional debt. No more credit spending. People already have debt, right? And they know they're in a debt. And they will, I know in the States, you get credit cards <laughs> to you. You, over, you go to your mail, you say, hey, you could, you're eligible for a credit card. You know, but I never did that. Because I said, if I'm going to buy something, I'm going to buy something. Why would I... Um, Credit something where I could buy something right now, right, and um, pay more later on. To right. me, that didn't make no sense. That's just more of me wanting unnecessary things. Because right. once you have a credit card, your eyes, you're gonna see something. Uh, three hundred dollar sneakers, man. My brother Rap said had hey, those. I like those. I always wanted to get them. Now you're gonna take that credit card and go credit it. And on top of that $300, you're 
it might cost you um, $20 more, but now you don't even pay on time. So now your credit, the, the $20 might turn into $40 more. If you don't pay credit on time, they got penalties. So that's how you dig yourself in more and more in debt. Right. Step two is to make a covenant with God that from this point on, as he bless you, you will pay off your debt as quickly as possible. Amen. Yeah. Some people, um, like, they get a, they, got, they, they work hard and they ask God, oh, God, help me, help me. Give me more money. Okay. Getting more money is not actually solving the problem. No. Getting more money might be putting you in more no. trouble. True. Yeah. So if you have, if you're seeking godly counsel, that's why it's very important to seek the word of God. Amen, amen. I know sometimes that our physical body, mentally, will be like stressed out. And when we get home, we don't have time. You know, we got to tend to this. We got to go uh, after work. We might have to pick up a loved one. And we get home, we're tired, we're hungry. But we need to put aside, make up time for God, seek his counsel. And when you start trying to do that, you will start doing it. Anytime you start trying something, you will start doing it because you know it's beneficial to you when you get spiritual wisdom from God because there's nothing better than spiritual wisdom over worldly wisdom. Right. Okay. Um, it also say on number three. three is the hand-on practical part. Make a list of your debt. Yeah, yeah. From the largest to the smallest. And in descending order. For most family, the home mortgage is at the top of the list. Of course it is, because you know you take out the loan. You don't want to take out that loan and be building that house up and you can't pay that loan and they take it they take away that house. You know, you made an agreement with that. You know, so you um you um begin by making a list of the least minimum payment due on each of your debt on a monthly basis. Don't try to pay the larger bill. You're gonna struggle with that. Try to knock off the smaller bill. You know, start with the least. Whatever is the least, you start knocking it off. And now you have more money to pay the other bills that are higher and higher and higher. And then you know. You, you come to agreement that you're doing better. Because if you can't start do some a small task, how are you going to do the big task? Impossible. <laughs> yeah, very impossible. you just fooling yourself. You and if you have a spouse, you and your spouse need to come together as one. And don't try to hide that you ha you're struggling with the bill. Go to your wife and say, honey, you know, what you're doing. You're supposed to be as one. You know, a man and a woman are one in God's eyes. You know, so God wants all of us, the church members, all of us here, we're supposed to be in one accord. Anything we do, we're supposed to do it in one accord. And that's how we get blessed. Because, you know, if we're in one accord, then we made an agreement to, for a specific goal. And then we're supposed to stay with that goal. And if we stay with that goal, we will reach that goal. And that that's why you pray on everything. You know, you put God for you put God in your midst so you can seek spiritual wisdom, spiritual knowledge, and spiritual understanding. But that will increase your spiritual life. Amen. Okay. Wednesday now. Okay, let's go on to Wednesday. Charity and get rich. Charity and getting rich. Quick, quick schemes. schemes. <laughs> okay, um, we are acquainted with schemes. I mean, a lot of us might, in the BVI, we heard about this quick scheme that was going around cars or clothes talker. And a lot of folks, you know, even Christian uh, folks who say they are Christian, you know, find themselves caught up in this scheme. And in the end, it turned out to be a gimmick where a lot of folks lost their money. And like it's less, less a point of this scheme, always the one who set out who organized the scheme is the one who the scheme is beneficial to. <laughs> it's never beneficial to those who join it. No, 
it's always set out to make the one who set out for the scheme rich. Yeah. It says, um, sometimes it says, sometimes a fellow church members will come to you to ask you to co-sign. Your response should be, oh, yeah. the Bible say, I should never do that. Please understand that the Bible encourages us to be helpful to those who are in need. But we should not become responsible for their debt. You know, I've heard uh, about folks who good godly Christians who have good love in their heart for their brothers and sisters and caring for their brothers and sisters, you know, blindly, you know, co-sign some alone for an individual. You know, as Christian, you figure, okay, it's your brother and sister, and you expect them to be honest. You know, but it's surprising that it don't work out the way how you think it all the time. And I've known of situations where, you know, I know this guy, you know, he could sign her alone for a young lady. And, you know, one day he, he told me, he was speaking to my wife, and he said, you know what, the bank, I received a call from the bank. Well, the last thing I know, I didn't borrow any loan from the bank. So I'm wondering, why did the bank call me? Yeah. So then I didn't pay no attention. But he says that the bank keep calling him all the time. And so he decided, you know what? I'm going to go in to see what they really want. Because I know for sure that I haven't borrowed any loan. I'm ha I don't have anything with them that caused them to call. But let's, I am just going to see what they really want. To find out that the loan that he could sign for, the lady, the young lady, leave the island. And now he is left now to repay the loan. And you know how disheartening that could be is that you are paying for a loan that you, you don't even have. You ain't had nothing to you do with it, basically. Nothing. You, you haven't enjoyed yourself at yeah. one dime from that loan. You don't even know how that money is spent. And because of that love that you have in your heart, and as a Christian, you think that you are doing the right thing. But here, we have wise counsel. If someone asks in the church, listen, go sign a loan for me. The answer should be, the Bible to say, no, do not co-sign loan for individuals because even folks who call themselves Christian might right. leave you hanging yep. and you might have to repay the loan all by yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible tells us that we should not do that. Yeah, Brother Glasgow, um, yes. I want to tell you that the, the Bible is full of warnings. Right. It has its blessings, but God warns us about a lot of things. Yes. In the beginning, um, I always look at the beginning of Genesis because to me, that is the start of everything. And before God told them about any blessing, which he already did bless them because he gave them everything, but he told them specifically, he gave them a warning. Yes. You know, he said, do not, you know, do not eat from the tree of not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you do that, you will die. You know, and a lot of us we don't heed warnings. You know, yes. and as we as Christians, right, we 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 know God is good to us, and we want to do. We are inclined more to do good to treat our brothers right, sisters right, strangers right. But we have to be careful about that. Amen. There's nothing wrong with sometimes saying no. Man, and First Timothy 6, 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all sort of evil, and somebody longing for it wander away from the feet and piercing themselves with many grief. And so it tells us that the lover of money is the root of all kind of evil. And it's because of this greed that they have for money. It says that some even lose the, the faith. You could imagine that, you know, to a lot of folks, you know, they fail to grab hold on eternal things. Yeah. But instead, they grab hold on the riches down here on earth that will only last for a time. And that's how, you see, the devil make you feel comfortable. Yes. And he'll give you all his riches. Right. But in the end, he knows that you will not inherit eternal life. And that's why he's trying to keep, out, keep you out from a place that he already knows. He knows the bliss of heaven because he was there. And so he wanted to keep out all as much people as he can. And one way in which he, do, he does that is to make us get rich or 
to make us strive to get rich. And in doing so, we find ourselves loving money so much that we forsake God and the things of God for money. And not knowing that in the end, like Job said, he said, naked he come, naked he got to return. True. In the end. He it says, it says one thing he showed, one thing he wants. He said, after Worm destroyed this body, yet in his flesh he wanted to see God. So even if Job was rich, he did not let the material things in life, he did not focus on the material things in life that he received, you know, deviate him from the path that God really set out for him. Because God, Job always put God first. Amen. And so he realized that whatever he had was a blessing from God. And he gave it back to God. And if, even when God was willing to take back everything, he did not see it as, you know what, he didn't more and complain about it because he, his firm grip was on Jesus. Yeah. And so we too, we should have a firm grip on Jesus. And the things of this life, the things of earth, we know will go strangely dim if we just set our eyes and our affection on the things of God. Once you know that you are honestly serving God, there wouldn't be no challenge. You might worry, but you know that you are serving a faithful God and you are a faithful servant. You're going to stay faithful. You're going to increase your faithfulness because you know that you are innocent. Job knew he was innocent. Job knew he was doing everything that was right. In the beginning of Job, they said Job was an upright man. You know, Job made sacrifice to his son just in case they were doing the wrong. You know, so Job, he didn't know what was, under, uh, 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 what was going on, but he knew he was not at fault. It was just a test going on behind the scene to show how sincere Job was. Job, he, he had a lot of complaint because he was confused, but Job did not curse God. Job did not give up on God. He just took his suffering, and he said one day he'll be vindicated. Amen. Okay, Thursday, it talks about terms, limits, and barren points. points. And so Thursday talks about, the Bible gives us an um, example of folks who used to borrow. And so borrowing is not something new. It's from biblical time. And God set out guidelines in which the, the, lend, the, 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 the lender, yeah. where, you know, after, after seven years, this, the, the, the longest he could have actually hold, oh, hold seven years. To, uh, the, the individual in debt is seven years. Yeah, Brother um, Glasgow, in the book of Leviticus, they have those Leviticus laws about right. borrowing, marriage, and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And so after seven years, you have to give up the individual. Right. You know, and it, it, it goes on to say, God did not want the folks to be in debt either. What he was actually saying is because the lender didn't want to forgive. And did, what I learned from this lesson is that you should lend what you're willing to lose. Right. That's what I do. Because, <laughs> because you know, yeah. the Bible tells us that we shouldn't take our brothers to court. Right. right? And then you might find that you lend a brother money. Thousand dollars or whatever. Okay, a thousand dollars. Yeah. And you might be expected to be repaid that money. But somehow the brother is not holding up to his head end of the agreement. But then the Bible already told you that you must not take your brother to court. And so it behoves us is that you know what? When you are lending, you should lend with that heart. You know what? If the person returns it, then they return it. And if not, you know what? May God be praised. And right. so it say in this lesson, God gives seven years, and he said it's because of the hardness of the lender's heart. Because God really wanted them to forgive the folks in debt, you know, whatever they borrow. But he, so he, he said, okay, you know what? Since you're not, you're not willing to forgive the individual, I am giving you up to seven years period. And after seven years, you still, sorry, have to, you know, just give back the individual what they, um, what they borrow. Well, guys, I feel that um, it says that in the Bible too, though, that people that borrow, they should pay you back, they, because if they borrowed, and and um, and in Psalm thirty-seven, verse twenty-one, it says the wicked borrow and do not pay. True. God don't teach us that. <laughs> God teach us. When, you know, I feel good 
I don't borrow for nobody, <laughs> you know, because I know I got to give back. So I just save and I borrow from myself. That's it. Yeah, so I don't have no problem with myself, <laughs> you know. But if I do have to borrow for somebody, as soon as I can pay you, I pay you back. I, sacrif I, I sacrifice myself because you did me a favor. You helped me. So now I'm going to be, I, I should repay you back because that's what the Bible teaches me, you know. So, you know, and, you know, we are Christians. So we should know how to deal with one another, how God deal with us. God don't hold us on no debt. He, we, he, God paid our debt with Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. You amen. know, only debt that we owe, which the Bible say, is to love one another. Amen. Amen. Okay, and let's we gotta close. Let's want to read. Oh, uh, yeah. It says that be determined never to incur another debt. Deny yourself of thousands of things <laughs> rather than running into debt. Yeah. This has often been the cause of your life. Getting into debt, avoid it as you would be a small fox, like small fox. As you see, you know, some part it says that, you know, run as fast as you can away from debt. Right. And you know that, you know, that God wants us to live free. You know, there is nothing more, more, more happier than when you wake up in the morning and you, uh, the month comes and you realize that, you know what? I have, I have already paid all my debt. You understand? Amen. There, listen, there is that freedom, freedom of, and I know what God is actually talking about because anyone who have a loan or had a loan before, you anticipate that day when you will make the final payment. And whenever you make that final payment, it's like a burden just drop from your shoulder. Right. And that's what God wants us to experience. That freedom, that joy that comes, knowing that you don't owe no one. And, you know, and he wants us to experience it and, you know, share it with others. You know, and these experiences, like the other said before, is that even if you are not in financial debt, share it with others. Help them to understand that when you are, being, when you are free, don't spend money unnecessarily. You know, if you have to, to borrow, borrow at the, let's say outline, with the less interest rate as possible. You know, seek advice so that you won't run into problems. Amen. Amen. So may God continue to bless us, you know, as we continue to take heed to his words. And he wants us to live a financial freedom life because the Bible tells us that who the son is set free is free indeed. Glory to God.